Good evening, everyone, and welcome to vlog this, or as I like to call, way too much free time. Actually, I had way too much free time as a kid, and I learned how to do this. That's it! <laughs> Tonight, it's the convergence of e-marketing, entertainment, and entrepreneurship as we cover on, of course, uh, uh, blog this all the time. Tonight on the show, we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening on Twitter, uh, what's being Twittered out. We're going to talk about your clout on Twitter. Also, we're going to uh, check in with our new spinoff project, the Presidio Sentinel, and a uh, story that we did on the, the local village theater here in Coronado, California, Jason to San Diego, of course. Uh, with a, th an opening of the new theater, and also we'll check in with what's happening in entertainment. Entertainer, entrepreneur, email marketing master, David Kamatoy, the most talented Filipino comic juggler, rock star, radio personality, hitman you're ever going to meet. Okay, he's not a rock star. Say hello to my little friend, David Kamatoy. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody. We unintentionally, uh, once again, this is the warm moment of the show, so bring up something warm. We unintentionally launched the show on my birthday, uh, and uh, I'd like to first of all thank everyone who said, you know, happy birthday via social media and stuff. And there's a posting on my blog that waxes about how social media has really changed the birthday. Uh, back in the day, only a few years ago, the only people that contacted me were my parents, my sister, and a casino with an email saying, Happy Birthday, Dave. However, this virtual birthday, I had over a hundred uh, plus happy birthdays on Facebook and Twitter, etc., etc. So to all of my friends and family, thank you guys so much. Uh, much appreciated. And creepily enough, I, when I opened my Google browser on my birthday, I had this picture with this is the rollover saying happy birthday David thank you Google kind of creepy and a big brother sort of we're taking over the world sort of way not that I'm paranoid thank you once again that was my warm moment and now the news uh, in entertainment this is where it gets kind of funny kids uh, lost star Doug Hutchinson marries 16 year old uh, singer aspiring singer Alexis Stoden, or Stodden, whatever this is. Now this is only funny because this happened last month and uh, it's sort of become a wrong but funny moment because we're talking about like a 35 year age gap. But the people that covered this, uh, I looked on, you know, I was looking online for one of the blogs to say, oh, we can go to this blog. But what was even more amusing was the fact that there were so many uh, news stories that covered this and literally it ended up on, you know, of course, E! Online, it ended up on, uh, you know, all the big sites, but it also ended up on Big Soccer. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, why is, what does soccer have to do with uh, marrying a teenager? So I don't know about that. One of our own, uh, Leo James, uh, married Jessica, who's now Jessica James, who is Jessica Smith. He's actually attending uh, MIT up in Los Angeles, and his beautiful new bride is also uh, studying to be a librarian, UCLA. So congratulations, Bruce Ando Jr. and I were there to cover the wedding. We shot some great, beautiful footage, and hopefully we're throwing up a few images on that, but congratulations to Leo and Jessica, who were high school sweethearts, went apart for a while, came together. We say to them, congratulations, and you two kids do belong together. Well, as my father would say, never get married. That's what he would say. That's what he would say, though. I don't know. Yeah, he would say. If he was here, that's what he would say to you. So, don't get married. But it might be too late, I guess. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's talk about clout. My clout on Twitter. Uh, there are three sites now. These. Uh, there's been a lot of talk lately about influence and so we, uh, some people are calling it social capital. That's the new buzzword. Social capital. We should come up with a big graph. Social capital. Um. And basically what this means is your influence online and specifically as it wraps around usually Twitter because that's the most open API that we have so far. Um, I don't know if that's true, but it seems like it. The, the uh, three companies have come to the forefront to track Twitter, and a lot of these have been getting pressed, mo most notably Clout, and that's Clout with the K is in Klaus, uh, Clout, Klaus, little fish. Um, 
the thing about cloud is that they must have some huge marketing budget because man there was like about a month ago I got emails from clients saying hey what the hell is cloud so sites like clout Peer Index and Twitter Grader all rate or somehow come up with an algorithm to tell us how influential we are on social media, specifically Twitter. Okay, let's take a look at Twitter Grader or Tweet Grader as it's known now. Now, Tweet Grader is simplistic in comparison to the others. This was one of the first ones that came out. It's by a company called HubSpot that has a lot of neat tools. They actually have a suite of tools. And their deal is basically by using all of these tools, you can become more influential. They've, they were well, well ahead of the game before these other companies uh, came to play. But ultimately, it's a little simplistic in comparison to some of the other newer tools. But I like it because it gives me a grade of 100. Uh, key things here are your followers and following ratio with Twitter. And also, it gives you an ultimate rank. You can see here I'm about 24,000 out of 9 million. Uh, as of this, it used to be, you know, 3 million, and of course now it's up to 9. So you can see how important it is for you to have a footprint in Twitter with the growing number of users. Next up, kids, it's peer index. You can see the little beta symbol there. Understand your social capital. Uh, there are some cool things about peer index that I like. My peer index score is less. It's apparently a rank from 0 to 100. And you can see a rank of 40 plus indicates you are in the top 10% of the community and a rank of 90 plus indicates you're at the top 0.1% of the community. So I got a long way to go according to peer index. I'm just getting to learn to know what these mean, but there's kind of a couple of nice things that are there. This topic fingerprint that comes up, and you'll see that it, it, it divides by science and entertainment and tech and uh, arts. So this is kind of cool, even though I don't have a rating yet. You can see here they've got this nice uh, three-colored ball thing, which, of course, you know, we're always in the spheres at Juggle Mail. Um, I would assume that as the state range of four months increases that it will and that will also increase Again, this is kind of weird because it says my topics are mainly transportation and airline and travel Which sort of makes sense because of air gorilla But again, they must be searching for some specific type of keyword that's listed on a blog One of the other things that peer index does is that if you go to your public profile You'll also see that this is not just Twitter, you're actually logging in with, uh, with uh, Facebook and whatnot. Clout has some very interesting tools, and it's a little bit easier to understand because they put these cool graphs up. If you see, I have an ultimate score on Clout of 44 at this point. It has fun by defining you by known as an explorer. You can see here, I'm an explorer. It says I actively engage in the social web constantly trying to find out new ways to interact and network this this system knew me a little bit better so also tells me who I'm an, an, inf an influencer of in other words the people that actually retweet me which is kind of interesting and it also makes me go I need to contact more people then they've got this cool little this little graph that tells you your clout style and who's sharing about you and 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 uh, and who's also listening to you that's ranked in their sort of weird you know explorer broadcaster curator kind of deal they're starting to API on Facebook as well as Twitter just so you know Facebook is because that's the other open API baby so basically what I would suggest is Grab all three. It, it doesn't take long. I, I set up these accounts um, within, you know, I set up the new one within five, ten minutes. And they're fun. And it'll be interesting to see who moves forward with it. Again, Twitter Grader is your simplest, but it's got a suite of tools that's kind of interesting. Uh, Clout, because of its $10 million in funding, is going to become quite an interesting and influential leader and then peer index has some nice graphics but from what I can see of my initial you know what do I do it also feels like clout knows me better at this point 
Doesn't mean that it doesn't, it won't know me better as we move forward, but just uh, out of a cursory boom, Pyrenix seems like it knows me less. But that's also because that's the, well, that's probably the one that I joined the la the, uh, the most recent. So we'll see, we'll see. And we're back, and I am cool. Um, so let's put a bow on, let's put a bow on this. Social influence and Twitter. Check out these three sites, Clout, Peer Index, Twitter Grader, to get a feeling for what it's all about. I, again, I think of Twitter like a radio station that has the ability to turn into a conversation. You have to be, be willing to find some key people to have a good conversation with online that you know is public. Right, because remember, hello, it's a public forum, just like Facebook. More so than Facebook, it's pretty, pretty public. And so what you want to do is know that you're going to shake hands or communicate or say something funny or witty to someone else that is connected. For instance, our show last week as we relaunched Blog This, we talked about George Strompolis. George Strompolis was nice enough to say thank you via Twitter to me for covering the show, via Twitter to us for covering the show. Awesome, the right people are watching the show. So that leads to my second thing about database and being the emo marketing master that I am. Uh, here's the thing, what you wanna do is you wanna focus on being a rock star, and I say that again, a rock star in your own database. And by meaning that if you have 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 or 15,000, what you're really looking for is to have a, a, a solid dialogue or a conversation and be, create top of mind awareness within that group. Because you could have 300 people in the database, but if 30 of those people are clients and they're all paying you $5,000 a month on a retainer, that's a pretty good database. On the other hand, you could have 30,000 people on Twitter, not a one person pays you a single dime, and you're just cool because you got 30,000 people on Twitter. I like to think we're somewhere in the middle. So, <laughs> okay, we need some work on that. But <laughs> what I'm saying is this, is that uh, check out those three sites, number one. Number two, focus on the communication between you and some clear parties uh, uh, online. That's important. And also, remember that your conversation is public and have a, a conversation that eventually can help you or help you build your business, build your project, build your uh, social clout or your social capital online. Social capital. Blog This would like to thank all its sponsors and clients, including... Fred G. Francis originally worked as a lender for 12 years and then saw a need for the entrepreneur to have someone on their side who spoke the language of banking and could facilitate the deal. Craig G. Francis, SBA loan broker. Craig has been helping businesses for over 30 years helping place over 2,500 loans for over $1 billion total. This is the guy you want on your team. Craig has the experience and established relationships with banks and bankers. We are spinning off Blog This uh, with a show locally called with the Presidio Sentinel, which is a print piece, uh, a local print piece, and they've been around for 12 years. We're so happy to combine with them and Creative Our world, Worldwide Media to put this thing together, and we're doing a local version of the show. So we're going to show you a clip from one of the stories that we covered for both eCoronado, Blog This, and, uh, uh, and Presidio Sentinel, and it's the opening of the village. Village Theater. The Village Theater here in Coronado has been uh, silent for about a decade.
David, I'm here at the Village Theater, the grand opening. Man, it is such a historic place here in Coronado. Been shut down for such a long time. But now the, the theater seats are awesome. The inside, the snack bar is awesome. And the very first movie they're showing, Cars 2. What a great way to launch this whole thing itself. We're at the Village Theater. There's been a lot of village people out here. There were Indians. There was a guy like a cop, a construction worker. I think they're heading up right now to see you upstairs. Let's go inside and take a look at uh, the Village Theater itself so you can see a little bit about the amazing transformation here at Coronado Island. I'm the manager here at the Village Coronado Theater and we're having an amazing fun time. We're all excited and we're cooking all the popcorn and we just can't wait. Hi, my name is Lucinda Bennett, proud Coronado native since 1989. I had seen one movie in a theater before we moved to America and then we moved to America and every week started coming to the movies here at the Village Theater. So now proudly after 11 and a half years, we get to come back again and we're the first in line for the 945 show. My name is Lance Hallspaw, I'm with Vintage Cinemas and you are now sitting in the brand new, never been used, Village Theater on this unbelievably beautiful island. Hi, I'm Setsy Washta. Um, I was here in 1947 when the theater opened up and they had searchlights and I was just a little kid, about seven years old, and uh, don't remember a whole lot other than recalling the scene, the, the lights uh, lighting up the sky, bouncing off the, off the clouds, and, uh, uh, lots of people here, and, and uh, everybody's looking forward to, uh, to seeing the first run movie here. I think the, the uh, murals inside is beautifully done. That's what blew me away the most, actually, looking at the Coronado Island across the bay to the, the skyline of San Diego. It was just breathtaking. It's a whole different take on what cinema is and going to the theater. It was really nice. It wasn't what I was expecting. It was beautiful, I have to say that. I have to admit, like, everything was really nice. I, uh, I really like the glowing lights all over. You're standing on the terrazzo that we uh, restored. Uh, it was uh, original terrazzo connected to the building. It's been saved. Uh, and behind me is your all new concession, uh, your new designs, lighting, carpet, you name it. It's all new, brand new, I'm never so been I'm so excited to enjoy it myself, but then also bring a new generation um, here to enjoy it and see movies as they were originally intended to be. We knew, we knew there was a lot of anticipation to reopen the theater and we wanted to come up with a plan that would give as many people as possible a chance to enjoy the grand opening ceremony. So instead of having one, we decided to have four. So this is sort of the, the, the dessert at the end of the day, because I'd like to see a movie here, so. I, I wouldn't feel good about myself as a history teacher if I missed history, so I had to see the first one, I think. You actually have been inside and you saw Cars 2. First of all, how'd you like the movie? I, I love the movie. It was pretty cool. Did you see the first one? Uh, yeah, I did. Is this one as good as the first one? Yeah, I think this one's better. Yeah, opening night for the Village Theater is my friend Jackson. Thanks for watching. I'm Lance Allspa. I'm with Vintage Cinemas based in Los Angeles. And we have just opened our third classic movie theater venue, the Village Theater, on the beautiful, beautiful island of Coronado. And I think everyone will have a great time if they come and check it out. been a tremendous successful opening. A lot of news coverage out here at the beginning of the day to talk about what was going on. A lot of people came out, a lot of happy campers saw the movie tonight. Uh, I'm standing here at the Village Theater. I'm looking for the Indian, I'm looking for the cop, I'm looking for the village people. I understand, David, they're already upstairs with you. For the Presidio Sentinel News and for Blog This, I'm Kevin Fulton. So anyway, I'm David Commentary. Please send me an email or contact me at davidcommentary.com, jugglemail.com, check out the free trial, and of course, Commentary Media. Media group for all the team here at KMG and CWG and all the rest. I say thank you and good night. Peace, love, Jovi. Hi, this is David Commentary for JuggleMail.com, your ultimate email marketing program 
online. We have a system that's called Hot Prospects, and it's sort of hidden, a lot of people don't talk about it, but here's the deal. When you send out an email on our Juggle Mail system, you can track Hot Prospects. What that simply means is this, you can identify who opens and cares about your email based on the interactivity. So your sales team or you can basically look at our integrated CRM and pull up the names and call the people, the top 10, the top 12, the top 50, that actually care about the email that you sent. You go to the site right now, we will give you a free one month subscription with 100 emails so that you can test our system. That's a free a trial for 100 emails for one month, jugglemail.com. Oh, look, again, I'm juggling so you can't forget the name. <laughs> Yes, you. Like you've never been kissed before.